next. The Euromastix lives here. Notice that there's no water dish in this cage. The uh, silver bowl there is for live food. I'm going to put it up here because there are a lot of particles here in the sand. We do have sand sifters, so if the sand, if any of the cages that have sand in them um, look like they need sifting, please use a sifter to go ahead and sift out all the particles in the in the cage, whether it be particles of poop or particles of uneaten food. This time it's uneaten food. He's checking my hand out to see if I'm edible. I don't, he's never bitten me. I don't think he will. I don't think you need to be afraid of him or anything. We pick them up all the time, and you're welcome to also. Generally, though, when it comes to picking up the animals, you, if you're going to pick them up, if you're going to handle them, and it is good to handle them because that way they are used to being handled, but a lot of times they may not eat after you've handled them. So you want to feed them before you handle them in general. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and put his uh, live bowl, live food bowl, in there, and I notice that I kind of buried it in the sand. That makes it a lot easier for him to see inside because the live food that we put in there, he's going to be attracted to it by the movement of the food. So when it comes to um, his other food, though, he eats both vegetables and a little bit of biljack. So go ahead and dump his bowl. And even though it looks pretty clean, I'm going to go ahead and scrub it out anyway. There's not a lot of moisture in his cage. He, he lives in a very arid habitat desert habitat um, so he's not used to having a lot of moisture around and you know he doesn't have a water bowl in his cage and that's because he gets the moisture that he needs from his food so we give him what's very similar to what we give the uh, blue thong skink which is a partial bowl of vegetables and again you always want to make sure that the vegetables that you're giving any particular animal are bite size, so something needs to be cut down a little bit to make it easier to fit in their mouth. Please do that. And we've got all this nice fruit today to add to these bowls, and I'm not sure what a big fruit fanatic the uh, Euromastix is, but I bet you he'll appreciate this. So just give him a few pieces of fruit. And then other than that, you can give them a little piece of biljack, similar to what we give the bearded dragons, and also the nectaris. Uh, in other words, the size of the piece that you give them can be about that size. And then in addition to that, you can give them a live food item, but not in that bowl. Um, but our live food items, we have super worms. There are none in here right now. I need to go to the pet store and get some. If there were super worms, you can give them two super worms. We also have crickets, but don't feed the Euromastix crickets because they're too small. Don't feed the bearded dragons crickets either because they're too small. We pretty much save the crickets. About the only reason we have crickets is for the uh, tarantula. Um, so what you can feed the Euromastix as live food, if we have no super worms, is a fairly good-sized cockroach. So you can get here in the Dubia cockroach cage and find a relatively good-sized cockroach. Because we do always want to offer the Euromastic some kind of live food. He really enjoys it. And then go ahead and you, you don't have to carry the cockroach in your hand. I mean, cockroaches do not hurt you. They have don't even have the mouth parts to be able to bite you in any way. Um, that goes for the Madagascar hissing cockroaches too. But you can figure out your own way to transport the cockroach to the cage. But I'm going to go ahead and just throw it in the stainless steel bowl there. And you notice that he's coming right over right away because he wants to eat. And there it goes. No more cockroach. And that's pretty much it for the Euromastics. Just make sure the cage is relatively clean. This is a uh, heat lamp up above him here. You want to keep that at the right side of the cage, and that goes for all the cages. There's a cool side to the cage, and there's a hot side to the cage, and that, that allows these cold-blooded animals or ectothermic animals to regulate their own body temperature. So that's it for the Euromastics.